You have Blake and Randall on. You're on the air. Good evening, commissioners. Um, right now we are waiting for Rosalinda to okay. link to the her Zoom account and kind of get started. Oh, here she is. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, Vice Chair Rojas, we're gonna mm -hmm. ask you to lead the meeting. Uh, Chair Chiato is, is out today. Okay. Um, well, uh, I'll call the meeting uh, 6.07 p.m. And uh, can I get someone to lead the Pledge of Allegiance? Or do I have to? Um... You would either choose someone or if you'd like to lead, you can lead. Them. Okay, I'll lead it. All right. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Um, can I do a roll call? Yes. Commissioner Ross. Present. Commissioner Sanchez. Here. Vice Chair Rojas. Here. And Chair Chiado um, informed me that she's not feeling well and she will email us um, some of her comments. Okay. Um, can I get a verification of agenda posting of uh, November minutes? Or sorry, verification of the agenda posting for this meeting? The agenda was posted both at um, City Hall and the Hollister Community Center on Monday, March 14th, 2022, per government code section 54954.2. Thank you. And uh, can I get an approval of November's minutes? Do we just approve it just by saying we approve it? Yeah, I can. Yes. Mm -hmm. I need a motion in a second. Can I do that? Yes. Okay, I approve it. I second it. Who approved it? Vice Chair Rojas. And now I need a second. Oh, uh, uh, I, I was the first one. Yeah, Commissioner Sanchez. I have a motion by Sanchez and a, a second by Rojas. Yes. All right. Um, roll call vote. Hold on. Okay. Vice Chair Rojas. I need a roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Ross. Approved. Commissioner Sanchez. Approved. Vice Chair Rojas. Approved. And it's a pass approval um, passed by 3 0 vote with Chair Chiado um, absent. All right, can we get a uh, public comment? We do have a public comment from um, District 1 Council Member Perez. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Um, I just wanted to um, say how excited as, well, I'm not coming as actually a councilman, I'm coming as a committee of the 150 celebration. And we are looking forward to uh, hopefully that we can get the city flag contest going so that we can unveil it during the celebration. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, you guys keep up the good work. The city of Hollister appreciates you guys. That's it.
That was the only public comment. Uh, we have no other public comments. Okay. Um, can we get started on old business? The update on the impact fees? Yes. Um, update on impact fees. Um, Development Services Director Prado will um, bring this information to, uh, I think, the April 3rd meeting, if that falls on a Monday, or the April, one of the April meetings to um, approve a permit for a commercial, public permit for commercial buildings, and a 1% tax will go into a fund for art and culture celebration, our activities. So we will, we're continuing to move forward on the, those fees. Thank you. Um, old business two, Prop 68 grants fire station number two. The yes, um, the last time we discussed it, there was some question on how much um, money was allocated to the arts in the park. And uh, when I reviewed the budget, there was $20,000 that we had budgeted for um, the projects, and we included four, four, four different projects that we will install. Um, but there is room in our budget to, to move money around if we would ch so choose to. Um, we just have to um, decide on the amount, and then I have to let our project officer know that we will allocate you know, a different amount to our arts in the park. I would I wouldn't want it to exceed um, a more than thirty thousand, just because um, we're really really close on our budget. Mm -hmm. um, have there been any ideas surrounding what that would look like physically, or are we just working on the grant right now to get? Right now, we're in the beginning stages. Um, we were. Uh, we wanted to meet with our development services director Prado, but he was out last month. Um, mm -hmm. So we will meet on Wednesday to start working on this grant and um, looking at different ideas. But with that, um, it's in the next section. But with that, we want um, we want some recommendations from our our art council commission, I should say. Um, mm -hmm. So. We could work on approving a little more money allocated to art in the park, or if the commission is satisfied with $20,000, then we'll move forward um, with the next agenda item. Okay. Um, do we move straight on to new business? Is there anything, uh, any other comments from other commissioners about old business? Uh, regarding the increase of the funds, could that be determined after we kind of figure out what the cost might be for certain types of um, projects that we put in there, art pieces? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Once we decide on the art pieces we want in there, we, we present it to our project manager. I mean, not our project manager, our project officer. And our project officer is with the um, California State Department of Parks and Recreation. And we just kind of present a, a different budget. Any other commissioner comments? All right, can we move on to new business? Um, new business, at, at creating an ad hoc committee. Um, if you look down the agenda, there are several different projects that the ACC um, would have would need to comment on or be a part of or make some decisions. And so with that, um, I decided that maybe we need to, on outside of this meeting, create a committee to discuss some of these different projects. I talked with um, Chair Chiato. We can table this um, till our next meeting. I haven't been able to look at my phone to see what her comments were. Mm -hmm. um, or vice chair, you could assign people to the committee. Uh, she said she sent me an email. Let me review. Sure. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. 
what she would like to see is a breakdown of, of commissioners um, assigned to each project. Mm -hmm. So the different projects, um, art in the park, uh, she would suggest, so, so it would be the Prop 68 fire station number two, would be Commissioner Ross and Commissioner Sanchez. Um, the city of Hollister's 150th anniversary, Vice Chair Rojas, Commissioner Sanchez. Um, skate Park, Vice Chair Rojas and Chair Chiado. But I, I do recall Commissioner Sanchez requesting that we bring the skate park to, um, uh, to the agenda. So maybe uh, Vice Chair Ross, if it's okay with you, we can have Sanchez, Commissioner Sanchez, be a part of the skate park committee. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yes, I approve. Okay. And then... Um, and then there's some other ones. Clean California is Chair Chiado and Vice Chair Rojas. And and, uh, projects that we would be spearheading uh, yes. for our commission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So she has a few suggestions here. Um, and let me email this information to you guys and maybe we can have a discussion there. But she's in support of the ad hoc committee and just kind of breaking it down outside of the commission. And then what, what will happen is once we meet and discuss um, the different areas on the agenda, then you um, each commissioner will present their, their report on the project. Okay. Now, would we be working on these projects alone or would we also have others maybe who are interested? Others that are interested, we can only have two commissioners uh, um, mm -hmm. at the ad hoc committee because we don't want to violate the Brown Act, but sure. you would work with uh, staff. And if you would like to invite people from the public, then we mm -hmm. can do that. Um, and then we would meet separately outside of this, um, outside of our commission meetings. Okay. Um, can we discuss... Um, new business, the San Felipe Beautification Project. Yes, we have a report, a, a, a presentation um, on that one. And I'd like to introduce Eva Kelly. She is with the Development um, Services Department. Yeah, hi guys. Um, it's okay. Um, my name is Amber Cameron. I'm a senior planner. Um, Tina just also introduced my colleague, Eva Kelly. She's a senior planner. She's out here in the audience. Um, we've both been working with our consultants, Kim Lehorn. She's going to come on screen so you could see her face. Um, we've both been working with our um, consultants, Kim Lehorn, in regards to the San Felipe Beautification Project. Um, the presentation that Kim Lehorn will be giving tonight is to allow the commission to basically get an understanding of some of the um, potential themes and inspirations that we think are appropriate for this project. We're looking for the commission to give their input on potential applications and expressions for this theme. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free at the end of the presentation or any ideas, and I will pass it off to Kim Lee Horn. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. And am I going to be able to, looks like I have the privileges so I can share my screen now. Let me do that real quick. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, as Amber stated, um, we're working on some Planning level documents for a San Felipe beautification project. Uh, we do want to talk about themes and expressions and, and how we can best theme this corridor to fit the city and the arts and culture of the area. Um, so I, we will go into that uh, in a few minutes. I did want to give a brief overview of what um, the project is, the location, where we've kind of gone with city council up to this point. Um, so if I'm going to just hop right in. Kimmy Horn has been is under contract with the city of Hollister to look at planning um, beautification for the San Felipe corridor, particularly from 
Highway 25 to Highway 156. Um, you know, there's, there's key elements like there's county services, there's technology services up here off of Fallon. There's a existing uh, memorial park and dog park, as well as the municipal airport. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm sure everyone's well aware, there's lots of development planned for the corridor. So um, city wanted us to look at what a future planning level, uh, what that future roadway could look like, including beautification elements. Um, one, one item of note is we are um, considering roundabouts at many of these intersections in lieu of traffic signals or stop control, um, which we'll figure in a little bit to um, potential art and theming elements. Um, here is a, because um, <laughs> I'm an engineer, I, I like dealing with sections, but just to show what we're proposing to change for the corridor. Um, as we all know, it's an existing four lane arterial with a very large wide median. Um, but no curbs, gutters, or sidewalks on the periphery. Um, what this project would propose to do would, would be to add a um, mixed-use trail, a paved, likely asphalt pathway for bicyclists and pedestrians on both sides of San Felipe Road, going northbound and southbound. Um, we would also expect to um, add more landscaping, particularly trees and other um, low-maintenance landscaping along the corridor. Um, where it currently does not exist. And then um, this was a this is this was an element. This was a um, document that we brought to City Council in February um, to get their initial takes and impressions on the project. And one of them was to explore arts and theming, which is why we're here speaking to the commission tonight. But um, what we had previously done, along with um, my partner Randall, is identified key elements of. Um, Upgrades to the corridor, um, these, these symbols would include the new pedestrian walkways. We are looking at new transit stops. Um, the transit agency plans to extend service up here on San Felipe. Um, we're also looking at opportunities for perhaps wayfinding or, or, or monumentation, which goes back to our theming and branding discussions, as well as potential pockets for um, activity nodes, such as um, bike repair stations, seating, and things of that nature. Um, again, uh, we were talking about doing roundabout um, roundabouts at most of these intersections or traffic circles. Um, we do view that as our best opportunity to provide activities and nodes throughout the corridor. Um, the, the intersection kind of wows out and we have a little bit more space that we could perhaps put in um, seat walls or landscaping nodes or or things of that nature adjacent to the traffic, or adjacent to the roundabout. Um, there are some there are some pictures here. These are the ones that we presented to city council. We have since developed more and that's will be on the subsequent slides that I think Randall will speak to in a little more detail. Um, actually, that, that, is, that is kind of a brief overview of the corridor. Does the commission have any questions at this time before we talk about theming or, or the arts and culture elements? I like what I see so far. Uh, very urban, very inviting. Um, definitely like the the ideas that I see. Okay. Um, after that, um, Randall, did you, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Ross, did you? Yeah, that's okay. I was just wondering, do you have like a, do you have a theme or are you asking us for a theme? We, we, we will get to that. Um, so we, we've definitely, you know, that was definitely one of the key items when we spoke to the city council. Um, we have looked at potential theming opportunities um, and we will go into those in the next couple of slides. But of course we, you know, th this is a very local, it's, it's subjective, it's, it's personal. So we wanted to solicit input, see if there's any themes or opportunities that we've identified that the commission likes, or if there's another one that, that should be included instead. Um, so that's gonna, because again, this is a planning level document. Um, we haven't gone into full design. So understanding now what elements are important to um, the city to go and feed into final design elements. And then uh, what is the timeline? Do you have that set already or is that after more development of design? It would be after more development. Okay. Correct, Thank and you. that's currently undetermined. Um, the next couple slides get to the real good stuff. Some of the items that we talked about and potential ideas for theming the corridor. 
Um, Randall, have you made it on? Would you be able to speak yeah. to mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it was a good segue um, there to talk about kind of theming and like gave you a good overview of the project obviously its primary purpose is kind of traffic transportation safety but it has this interesting opportunity for us for theming and aesthetics um, and even kind of branding Hollister if you will so we kind of um, to your point we started to develop some ideas or things that we think we could potentially pull from and they're grouped really just in two categories, history and context, and then agriculture and industry. So when we think about things like fault creep, we have some really great examples of that um, there. You know, the Diablo range, the classic sort of rolling hills with oak trees that you think of when you think of California. Uh, obviously, the mission, the motorcycle culture, the gateway to pinnacles was a thing we heard from council. Um, the mission revival architecture, um, and then thinking about just agriculture and industry. So, you know, I mean, farms, strawberries, you've got aviation with the airport and such close proximity, wine making, chocolate making, um, you know, just, and then some industry type things with uh, the city founder and the transcontinental sheep drive. So those are just a few things that we kind of developed when we think about it and things that we can include. So I think that's going to be the first thing that we'll want your input on. Is there anything on these that you don't like, or you don't feel is representative of kind of the city or, you know, is there something we missed potentially that you think would be a good kind of design theme to incorporate? We can obviously incorporate one. We can incorporate all of them. Um, it's kind of really, I think, like Blake said, that's something we want to get your input on before we move into any kind of design as we're still in planning level. Um, I think uh, personally, these are uh, wonderful themes, um, particularly, uh, you know, the gateway to Pinnacles. That is a big one. I feel like the city itself has a good opportunity to really invite people to Pinnacles and uh, maybe if it's uh, closer to the urban area, maybe even locals will learn more about it. Um, you know, you can put facts or any way you guys uh, do a final design, you know, uh, I, I like what I see. Uh, as a newer resident of Hollister within the last uh, uh, few years, um, this is what I think when I think of Hollister, all these really uh, hits the nail on the head, I think. Um, I have uh, just a couple questions or I guess um, comments. I don't see a whole lot of, um, you know, faces of color. So for instance, given the population uh, background of Hollister being 70% um, Latino in particular Mexican, I think that there's, you know, definitely um, needs to be more um, representation of that, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, behind me, a lot of color. Uh, flowers, um, the baked, um, the panaderias, the bread here seems to be a really big um, mm. mm-hmm. love that the, the town really, um, you know, during the holidays or even just to celebrating special events, and, you know, um, Mexican bread is mm-hmm. uh, being around here. Um, so I think, yeah, there, I think there's a really important element missing here. Okay. Yeah, that's good, great. Good note. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we can get some of that included, I think, um, in probably both categories, honestly, or we could even create um, additional sort of third category to pull from. Like an appreciation for sure, uh, more visibility and appreciation because, you know, the agriculture, um, the mission, you know, all it all ties in, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's yes, uh, Commissioner Sanchez, I fully agree. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you for that. Uh, and I, I do like that you're also bringing in the businesses that are here. I feel there are a lot of industries that are just kind of secretly placed outside, just outside of um, the main part of town. So uh, bringing those to light also is really, really helpful. I, I like all of it. I'm just saying, <laughs> adding into 
what um, Vice Chair Rojas and, and Commissioner Sanchez are saying. I also have uh, one more uh, that just came to mind is I wonder what, um, you know, what the future, right, of what future Hollister looks like. Um, you know, what, you know, I don't know if it's technology. I don't know if it's, um, I know, you know, the wine region seems to be continuing to grow. Um, you know, I'm like, what else is there? And I know um, with all of the, um, you know, families moving into the area, um, you know, what that could bring. So I, I'm, I'm very curious. I know that with the creation of our uh, commission as well, um, I know that there's, you know, huge hunger to have an incredibly, um, you know, full and lively and vibrant um, artistic, you know, community. Um, you know, what does that look like given all the really beautiful murals that are currently up and what we're really looking at in the future. So, um, yeah, that's also a curiosity of mine. What does a future hollow star look like? I think that's a really good one. Right, especially as it's growing and growing and growing. I think that's a good thing to to look into um, because when by the time this gets created, it may have grown into something different. So, and representing the different voices and faces and experiences here, I think that's nice. And it kind of gives us this, this future look like you're saying. Yeah, I think, but potentially a good uh, third category uh, to kind of group that stuff would be arts and culture, probably. I mean, we could pull some kind of inspirational imagery for that. I think that's a really good, really good comment. Now, would you guys create, um, would you take this feedback, create uh, maybe something more into the theme and then come back to us or how does that step up? Um, well, we can kind of talk about that if, um, on the next slide um, okay. if we want to move on. Um, if, you, if, if you have any other comments or if there's any other ones in here, it sounds like kind of generally that it, it, it could encompass a lot of these different things. Mm -hmm. um, so the next one is kind of okay we've got a theme or themes and how do we apply them? Um, you know, we've got a lot of different opportunities with kind of the parts and pieces that are left over from the roadway improvements. So um, the first one is public art. We've got roundabouts. Um, they could go in other locations, but um, roundabouts are a pretty good uh, opportunity because they give you a lot of space and potentially to do something substantial. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Bend, Oregon, but they have kind of a, if you look it up, they have a roundabout art trail mm -hmm. um, and they promote it through brochures and things. And each roundabout's got a different theme. Um, you could approach it like that, or you could approach it where it's one theme continuous and all the art is made to basically fit that theme, or you could give each artist carte blanche at roundabouts um, and then as we moved into design we could leave space for things like that so that you could commission those pieces um, another one would be education and interpretation um, so we've got opportunities to do interpretive signage that's an example of fault creep um, so you can see how the earth you know kind of moves and you can explain that um, it's also um, nearby there's some uh, mosaics uh, is that Hayward Blake I'm sorry, I don't recall where that was from. I thought I it was more down in in Monterey County, but um. yeah, I, I can't remember exactly where that is. But yeah, it's it's fairly local. Um, so they've taken you know kind of arts and culture and history and kind of combined them and done mosaics and pavement. Um, we've got this bikeway that we potentially could either, as a part of the design process, include parts in, or we could leave spaces where it could be applied later um, and you could tell a story you could do a timeline there's a lot of different things you could do um, the third image there is just sandblasting and pavement very simple effective doesn't require a lot of maintenance um, so there are potentially messages or historical facts or things that you want to convey that's another opportunity um, site amenities the next category so things like um, you know, the county standard bus station, 
or bus uh, uh, shelter, you know, there's potentially opportunities to do pieces of art on that. Um, we'd have to work with them to see what we could and could not do. Um, and then also seating. So things like seat walls, um, we can incorporate things. If you can envision a seat wall made that look like a hay bale or something like that to represent agriculture, you could do things like that. Um, and then Blake also talked about bike repair stations. Um, have at least a few of those along the pathways. Um, I don't know that those are necessarily opportunities for public art, but they're definitely the vertical elements to think about that would be included in a project like this. Uh, what's the next category? Any of those there? Paving treatments. So we kind of talked about sandblasting before. There's opportunities to do things with patterns, maybe not text. So, um, you know, things like we talked about strawberries or um, you could sandblast uh, livestock images or agriculture um, things with pinnacles and, you know, representing that sort of aspect. We can also use color um, in aggregate, like glass aggregates, recycled materials um, in the image on the bottom, kind of in the middle there. And then there's also, um, they even do make glowing aggregates. So I think that's a bike path in the Netherlands somewhere um, where it actually glows at night. So you can, um, you could do things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then speaking of night, you know, we're going to have some sort of pedestrian level lighting. We've got constraints near the airport on height. Um, so it's going to have to be lower level type lighting. So, you know, we can do things like pedestrian bollards. There's lower poles. Like you can see in the upper image there. I think that's in Santa Monica. Um, but you can see how it really creates the nighttime experience for this corridor is definitely different than the daytime. And it's, it's key to think about that. Um, they also make really effective uh, lights that fit in the pavement itself. Um, so, you know, maybe key nodes or near roundabouts or pedestrian crossings, you know, you can, you can create kind of a cool experience in the ground um, and still keep it lit for safety. And then the last one's wayfinding and identity. So, you know, things like banners on light poles, um, branding, sort of the corridor signage. Um, that's an example, cycle the city. So you are here type maps, um, how far to key destinations. Um, and then the last one's just kind of an overall sort of um, map of, of a location. So um, that's kind of our thoughts and ideas, at least at a high level of how we can incorporate some of this stuff. So I guess kind of the same question, are there things that you really like? Are there things that you don't like? Or are there things that maybe you're missing that you, an opportunity that we didn't capture? Uh, I'm impressed. I, I really honestly like all of it. It's stuff that I do want to see here in uh, the city. Um, I know, uh, you know, I like the trail idea. I like that there's a place for pedestrians to get out and walk. It's a long corridor there. Um, not too sure about how the roundabouts will work, but I'm interested to see how that, that idea kind of develops. Um, like the sandblasting idea seems like a very low maintenance way to um, really spruce things up a regular sidewalk. Like you guys said, you can put different designs, different, uh, Hollister elements. Uh, I do like the lighting. Um, keep it simple. Um, I like the signage of keynote, you know, key. You are here. How, this is so many miles. You know, you could really um, work on that. I not too sure about the transit. Might have to know a little bit more about that. But uh, so far, uh, I like what I see. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with um, Vice Chair Rojas uh, that um, these are all really great ideas. Um, I'm particularly fond of that glowing trail at night, I think. That, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. It's kind of funny because I actually ran into that sometime last year. And um, so it just immediately stood out to me. Um, and I think that it's um, given that night the nighttime in particular here is a little bit tough like if you want to take a walk it just yeah. seems to be a lot of darkness you know mm -hmm. and yes um you know it's especially very dark yeah 
Yeah. So I think a lot more sort of um, night lighting and, and yes, glowing, beautiful little pebbles or stones, uh, aggregate, whatever that might be. Um, and, um, and yeah, having a place to say, yes, if we're going to walk at night, given how short downtown is, it just gives you that much more extra, um, space to continue. Um, so yeah, besides there again, you know, um, my message will always be representation. Um, other than that, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's a lot of really good, um, a lot of good ideas here. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, so I, I would have a question kind of for all of you, I guess, if, if in your focus is public art, um, what are your sort of top, I guess, maybe top three ideas on how or where to convey public art of kind of these examples, or maybe some other example that you've seen that you like? Is it you know, standalone sort of sculptural piece in a roundabout? Is it like signage? Is it some sort of ground level, ground plane type thing? What kind of of, of these, or is there sort of three favorite ideas? Uh, Commissioner Ross is trying to speak to. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll tell you, I'll answer that question and then I'll come back to some other ideas that I was thinking of also. Um, I think that the paving treatments are a really great way to, it's kind of this like directional line in art where you're, you're having people meander through this space. I also really like the idea of having those, the glass or the um, glow in the dark uh, materials. There's actually, there are a lot of companies just in that area that work with either marble or they do casting or there's all these different um, kind of hard industry, hard arts that could be really, I think it'd be really neat to welcome them into this space and just really highlight them if they could be a part of that as well, um, sort of honoring their existence in our community. Um, the pedestrian level lighting, I think that's really important. Like like Commissioner Sanchez was explaining, and especially as a female, I'm not gonna go in a lot of places when it's dark. So having a lighted area is excellent. If we have a lighted area that's kind of playful, that would be really neat. Meaning something like an example would be if it's, um, if it's also, I don't know if this is possible at all. I've seen it in some places. But I don't know if it's possible here, but having kind of that keyboard that lights up and then people mm. really interact a lot with that. Um, and then just a side note also, it's extremely hot here in the summer and there are a lot of walking trails here that are not accessed because they have, they're very exposed. So whether it be um, having trees or even some kind of overhangs for people to kind of, um, I'd say along the trail, plenty of trees so that people will actually go to it. I know that there is one trail that was recently opened up, but it doesn't have a lot of trees and it's very exposed. So not, I know a lot of people don't go there because of that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's more for like heat reasons. Um, the roundabouts, I think those are awesome ideas. Those are pretty neat to, to have installed education and interpretation. I think those are pretty neat, um, tells us about the history and maybe where we'd like to see our community going into. And then, um, so I really like all of it. <laughs> and then the, the places to kind of sit and fix your bike, which that kind of leads me into, um, like a par course, is that something that's been discussed at all with it? Keeping people active, they can, you know, stop along the way and I don't know, do little step ups or things that are just stationary. And, and then everyone can kind of be as a community. I grew up in the East Bay and it's San Leandro at the Marina. There's a par course there and I loved it. And it's so it's frequented so much. There's people exercising out there all the time. And, um, and then it's, you know, free exercise equipment for 
for the community? I, I guess uh, maybe I've thought as a different, are those like the ones where like there's like almost like side furniture where you can do like pull-ups and sit-ups and step-ups and all that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, and they, th those kind of um, were a very 1970s thing, but they have upgraded them now. So they're actually um, more like, um, they're more made of steel or metal than wood, which a lot of the older ones were. And um, they're more like traditional uh, gym workout equipment now, a lot of them. So it's not like a bench with a bar on it that you do kind of pull-ups on. You can actually get ones where you can do more traditional sort of equipment exercising, which is kind of cool. So it's an opportunity to kind of mix both of those styles if you, if you choose to. Yeah, they've definitely done that at the San Leandro Marina. They've added those more traditional ones at the start of the trail um, or at the par parkour. Um, but I don't know if it's possible to also kind of have some artistic element to those um, or bring in some local artistry on a painting or anything like that. Potentially, yeah. Uh, it's an opportunity, I think. Because uh, one, one thing you said earlier, too, that uh, sparks my interest is interactive. Um, is there an opportunity? The roundabouts are great for art, but they're not. So you more look at it. It's not an interactive piece, yeah. if you will, you know, which can be good and bad. Then you don't have people messing with it because it's in the middle of the road. It's more you just see it. But the downside is you can't get close to it. So um but uh, it's definitely two different types of opportunities. And, and Commissioner Ross, just to speak to the, you were talking about trees and overhangs. We're, we're definitely planning for trees along the corridor. We just, we weren't, um, we talked about that more when we went to city council, but yes, we're, we're going to put in trees where it's, um, where it's going to, um, where we're going to have room and space and opportunity for it. So yes, that's definitely being considered. And everything we do will be uh, obviously low water use, and meet all the state mandates on, on um, water and everything. So for irrigation. Sounds good. Thank you. Commissioner Sanchez has comment. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely um, agree with Commissioner Ross on a lot of those ideas. They're all great. The only thing I would ask is, for instance, if something is interactive, and I, I, I'm thinking also um, maintenance wise, you know, what, what is, say, a budget for, for maintenance? So if any of these things ever break, or they break down, or they get defaced, or anything like that, like, how you know how quickly would these things be fixed and are we going to be sitting there with these really cool looking things that no longer work because they're broken and how long would that you know take to get repaired kind of thing um so i think for instance in my mind you know uh, low maintenance is actually probably right preferable given that you're also saying that um you know we'd be using low you know water so i'm assuming any kind of foliage or foliage would be um, uh, maybe cactuses and things like that um, or succulents rather um, and I'm only making these assumptions um, and the other thing is of all the green spaces on this corridor as well are they conducive for say um, events of any sort so for instance like in San Jose they have Viva Calle where you know, you go and, you know, do the whole um, bike, um, or yeah, the bike-a-thon, um, you know, and you are able to stop from spot to spot, but yet, for instance, um, a lot of locations will maybe host a movie uh, for the kids while you go and taste their, you know, their, their baked goods or their restaurants, um, you know, things, festivals, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, I'm wondering if these are also multi-use um, sort of spaces that could be conducive for events and, and festivals. Um, and yeah, I'm a big fan of the roundabout. So um, especially um, with murals uh, being statistically um, proven that, uh, you know, they don't necessarily get graffitied on or um, defaced. Um, you know, more murals perhaps are an interesting idea, especially with the roundabout. So 
yeah. Thank you. Um, and then I have, just have a comment. Um, when I think of uh, like things like this, I think of, um, you know, there play, there's spots and places that you want people to go. You know, you could have as much uh, cool stuff on the ground, lighting, all this kind of stuff. Um, but why is a particular reason why someone wants to go there? Is it something that they see that's really cool? Can they take pictures of this art? Can they share it on social media, get other um, local folks uh, interested and excited about it? Um, and then where do you take that element at, right? Because if you were to put something really cool and interesting in the roundabout, is it safe for people to want to take pictures around it, to be close to it, to be able to read any, you know, scriptures that are on it. Um, so I guess we would have to find places, exact areas um, that uh, we could get the public involved um, and want to be there. Um, and then, of course, you know, local is always good. Um, I know sometimes uh, people have really great ideas, really great pieces, really great sculptures, things from uh, outside um, cities, but definitely want to keep it local. And um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking also maybe like a start to finish kind of thing um, gets people really motivated to maybe want to walk the whole thing, right? Is, is there um, a prize at the end? Is there something that, you know, instead of just getting your normal walk, is there goals to reach each time, you know? Um, uh, that's all I have for right now. I wish I had more ideas, um, but this is all great. This is all good feedback and good stuff. Yeah, those are great ideas. I, we could do, um, you know, things like marking the distance in the pavement through sandblasting, how far you've gone, um, and then sort of nodes along the way that, you know, kind of convey a journey because um, mm -hmm. kind of made the comment about photos and things. It's interesting how Instagram has changed the way we look at kind of art and things. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's an opportunity to draw people to Hollister if, if it's set up in the right way and they can get really cool photos or selfies of themselves with different right. pieces. So all good stuff. And I think Commissioner Ross has a comment. Yeah, I just was um, piggybacking on uh, Commissioner Sanchez. Were you meaning like an amphitheater? Um, the multi-use space? I don't know. Oh, are you asking me? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if necessarily an amphitheater, but that's why I was wondering how big the spaces would be. Like, you know and I'm only saying Shakespeare in the park just because it's you know, the first thing that comes to my mind, but if we wanted to do some sort of festival or event, how big is it? And could you actually like host people there in those spaces? So, um, but yeah, an amphitheater sounds cool too. <laughs> so you, you don't have a lot of space between the right of way kind of in the street. You'll have small seating nodes in some areas, but what you do have and you have at the end of the corridor, um, there is a park, an existing park um, that you have an opportunity to even potentially expand. So it could be a journey and you get to the park and then that's where the event is. It's unfortunately kind of in the flight path of the airport so you can't go super vertical with anything in there but you do have some open space on one end of the corridor is that there near the dog park it is yeah yes yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. that's what exactly. randall's referring to it's and it's actually more um it's it's in the middle of the alignment off of fallon road but not not the end of it but yes. oh sorry yeah. that's that's what randall's referring to though we've we viewed that as, as a as a key node given um fallon road coming in here it's already a um it, it's an area that could definitely stand to be a little more activated and, and give more reason to go there. And, and the park could be an anchor to that. And Blake, if you go back to the enlarged view of the typical kind of plan, uh, this one here, yeah, that one would work or the plan view as well. Um, you can kind of see you've got, you don't have a, uh, well, go, we'll go back. Uh, I think it's about the third slide. This one here? Uh, next one. The one you had up, yeah, right there. 
So, I mean, those, how wide are those medians? 10 feet? Out, out, out here? Yeah. How wide is uh, that median? Uh, 20, 25 to 30 feet. It's a very, very large wide median. It's the okay. existing roadway. But, but in here, for so example, if, this, is a, this is a 12 yeah. foot path. Yeah. So if you look at that and that's 25 feet, you can see you really don't have a lot of room. These aren't spaces that people are going to stay and hang out for very long. That's kind of correct. a stop and go kind of space, learn about something, get, take a break, grab a little bit of shade, have some water, and then you continue on the path probably. Yep. So yeah. The, are you, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I would say just uh, to set reasonable expectations. Yeah, there there isn't really available space for a large meeting space, and and Viva Kai is a really interesting example. I've been to that one um, just last year, but you know that there the street gets closed. That's where all the space comes from. Is that you know the major road gets closed to vehicles and and bikes and pets can just go out in the street. So that's how you gain the space in Viva Kai. But so. Has anybody been to downtown Napa? I just was there recently. They have this interactive or this light show there, sculptures. I am not familiar with that. Okay, um, so it's, there is a river. So that does lend to the um, ability to create their amphitheater. And it's basically the amphitheater, it's street level, and then it goes down into the to the river and so that's where you get the height oh and it's not very very deep either so it's just i think because it allows you to go down into the land essentially if that was a possibility that would be a really neat space and it's even just having there's so many dancers that we have here and um and music and it would be neat to have just kind of a local little activity that goes on. I also am curious, um, this probably doesn't have anything to do with art, but because it's kind of uh, a ways from where a lot of Hollister residents live, is there an idea for parking spaces um, where if people wanna bring their bike or if people want to walk it, do they park somewhere? that's safe for them to, because I also know it's an, uh, uh, a lot of businesses and industry. I'm not sure if that even has anything to do with us, but I'm just a little curious. Uh, I mean, that's a, that, that's a good, that's a good comment because it's, it's, um, it's always a question that comes up about parking. Um, but along existing San Felipe road, um, there is not parking and we do not expect there to be parking in the future because we're going to have a shoulder and we're going to have the multi-use path. Um, I think the mo the best opportunities are going to be on the um, there's a, there's a frontage road of course along the east side. Um, I believe there is existing parking there. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, not necessarily. We were not planning for parking along the the frontage. I don't think there's um, existing parking as well. Mm -hmm. But certainly something to be considered. But yeah, the current programming doesn't really allow for street parking. Right. So how would people get there then? I mean, are they taking public transportation? Are they taking a bird? Are they? Uh, I mean, all, all very good notes, yeah, because it, it is outside of downtown. So it's not like there's an immediate place to, um, to get there. Very good question that don't have a full answer for. But um, yeah, we, <laughs> we would be expanding transit service along the corridor. This is going to be um, ideally a place for bikes and pedestrians. And so folks could travel to it. But we, it is a long corridor and it <laughs> we are talking about some fairly long distances mm -hmm. and it's kind of like more of a, a regional sort of uh, like small regional connectivity for commuters on bikes and peds um and less of a destination correct I, yeah I, I would agree with that um at least you know uh, there was a discussion about what's the future of the corridor look like but yeah right now we view yeah. it more as a regional and not necessarily the destination I mean, all that aside, I think it's a good start to beautifying that strip of road. Because, um, yeah, you never know what the future will be surrounding that. Um, it's good to get ahead of it now um, and just to see where the future heads. But uh, of course. I don't, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think that's a problem for right now. But I, I do like the, some of the ideas. And the, the 
transit is it transit that's just through that corridor or is it going beyond in just going up north um is it free is it like a little trolley that people could hop on and off and then go and explore would it pick people up downtown and then take them through there and i think this also looks wonderful it's a great idea it's it's um how do we get people from downtown and town out into that space? And especially if there's no parking for people to then commute to that spot and then enjoy it, it might end up just getting kind of, it might just fade away. That's a very good comment. Uh, Frederick, um, are, do you, are you familiar more with the, the transit X? I thought yep. it was extending from downtown to the north. Yeah, so, so uh, my name is Frederick Winter, also with Kimberly Horn. So on the so, so so let's get a little bit back to this, right? So the the plan line and the ideas here is to do beautification along the corridor, right? And the primary focus is going to be along the corridor. We have the opportunity, number one, at the dog park. That's where we have a little bit of space where we can do some placemaking and uh, have some fun time, right? So. The idea with the with the multimodal connectivity that we establish on both sides, with trails and walking space on both sides of the road, is to get people to be active. So the intent is that number one, <clears throat> we can have a bunch of of industrial buildings along the corridor, and there are a bunch already, and there's going to be new ones constructed. So number one, there's an opportunity for you to actually take the corridor from your house if you ride your bike to go to work. So the commute activity is now being accommodated. That's not being done in a car. Um, so you can do your bike, you can take a scooter, you can walk. Um, the next opportunity is if I want to take my dog for a walk. So I can take my dog. And if I'm prepared to walk a couple of miles, um, you know, I can uh, go up to the dog park, rest there, have fun with my dog, and then go back to my house. Um, regarding transit, we had a conversation with the with the San Benito Council of Governments, local transportation authority, about installing bus stops along the corridor. Um, so they don't have a bus service right now that runs on a regular basis. Um, they only have the on-call services. Uh, but the idea is going to be on the short term is to have the bus um, sort of link with their current um, programming and their current routes to extend up the corridor. And in the short term, the bus would actually turn around at a new driveway that's going to go to the, it's called the Clearest Park Axis at Bird Drive. So there's a big development coming just to the west of Bird Drive. So the bus would turn around at the roundabout and then come back. Um, the, the public transit agency does not have any plans to take the bus um, into the local streets off the side right now. Um, you, usually our transit services work as they wait for density and opportunity before, before they um, plan the bus routes. Um, it's very expensive for them to say, hey, let's get the bus going and nobody rides it. But what we are doing in this infrastructure plan is to provide um, bus space and bus pullouts um, so that if the LTA decides in the future to run the bus, um, we already have that opportunity along the corridor. So okay. the intent, oh, sorry. I was, saying, I was just saying thank you, Frederick. <laughs> That's all. So the intent then is really that we're encouraging people to um, basically not use their cars, right? Is that that's like the first thing? Exactly. With, with yes. providing the multimodal infrastructure, let's get them out of their cars. Correct. Okay. And then the second thing is though, if it turns out to be that people still don't go without their cars, then potentially um, there could be um, the possibility of a bus riding through there in order for uh, pedestrians to get there, basically. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Right. Yep. Okay. And I can say we're also looking at a potential restroom at the, at the park. Oh, wonderful. So now that we have this uh, information from you guys, we giving you a little bit of our... Um, ideas what where where do we go from here with you guys so um, randall you want to go blake yep. yeah, sure sure so uh, i think we've got a good start on kind of some of the 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 ways to incorporate 
um, some of the themes. And then as we begin to develop it, that's kind of the, some of the key areas we'll focus on. I think stuff uh, that we would need from you all in coordination once we get to that point into design is going to be if there are specific things that you want to convey. In other words, things like historical facts um, tend to take a while to get approved either through um, you know, uh, local museums or historians to make sure that what you're conveying is, is correct and factual. So, you know, blasting things in concrete or doing sign panels takes longer than sort of overall themes with its strawberries or whatever it might be, uh, you know, gateway mm -hmm. pinnacles. So as we kind of get into design, those are the types of things we're going to think about. And then we'll start to incorporate these ideas that we've talked about um, into the spaces that we have remaining that are left over from kind of the focus of the project, which is the traffic. Um, I mean, that's for me really the next step. So as much detail that you can provide us now in terms of like we talked about the themes and maybe it's, you know, it takes you a little while you want to think about it after the meeting and then reach out sort of with your preferred directions or ideas, that would be great. Mm -hmm. The more detail you can provide us now helps um, later on in the process. Does that answer your question? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I, I think I, I, I think Anthony, if I may just add a little bit. So, so our intent is so this is a what we call a plan line study with beautification elements. And the plan line study, the intent of a plan line study is to determine geometry, right? What's the road going to look like, and set the right of way. The city will, as future development occurs along the corridor, ask developers to help fund the infrastructure right, and help make this place beautiful. Um, you're probably going to see once Clearest Park comes in that, uh, you know, they're going to have to do the frontage improvements. And the city is probably going to ask them, hey, guys, we have this new plan line. We have a beautification plan. We have a planting palette. We need artwork. There's going to be a roundabout, all those kind of things. We need you guys to help fund this and build this, and it may be a conditional approval. So, mm -hmm. so where we are now is we, we would like to get great ideas, your great ideas, which you have provided on saying the theme that we would like to see along this corridor is A, B, C, D, E, right? And, um, and, and what, or, or let's choose a specific theme. And then the second thing is things that you think that we've missed or that you want to add, you know, send ideas, send pictures in, because those will make it into this plan line document. And then as the development of engineering drawings move forward, then of course the artwork and the landscape and the hardscape and the planting will all go in with it. And mm. that's why we need the arts uh, commission uh, ideas right now. Yeah, I think too, you're kind of preferred because obviously budgets are always limited. So sort of your preferred approaches to incorporating public art um, you know, if it's top three, top five, we've talked about it a little bit. So, you know, if number one is roundabouts, I'm just throwing out examples. Number two is maybe paving treatments. Um, you know, there's been some debate about roundabouts with the art. Maybe you don't want them in the center. Maybe you want them off to a side near a path, something like that. Yeah. So we have some direction. So it's very clear when we put the report together and the plan. Very good. And, and lighting was also another one, I think, that, that got kind of universal. Yeah, approval. I would agree. Yeah, I would yes. agree. Which is not surprising to us, by the way. We figured that was a very <laughs> key element. <laughs> and I mean, lighting, you can, you know, two birds with one stone, right? You could um, you can make it colorful lighting. You can make it like on the ground lighting. I mean, it could be, you know, uh, safety and art all at one. Um, but definitely lighting, I think, for all of us would be um, probably close to number one um that we'd like to see uh commissioner ross do you have a comment yeah i was wondering do we get to do we get to have local artists create the art for this uh yeah i think there's a great opportunity to do that so um the best way to do it from the standpoint is uh, from the design is to leave spaces because kind of timing and funding, sometimes it doesn't always work where it gets included into a project specifically, or it follows after the project's complete. 
So knowing where those opportunities are. So we talked about the roundabouts, we could leave space or we could put in footings ahead of time for sculptural pieces. If we know the general parameters that you want to hold the artists each to, there's also ways where if say the pavement or the bike path is asphalt, um, we leave three diameter circles. It, it, predetermined spots along the bike path that eventually get ripped out. Um, and then that's where a mosaic goes, for instance. And you give every artist kind of, this is your canvas. You've got a three foot, five foot circle, whatever you, whatever it is you want to kind of set as your parameter. And then you could have them, you know, as you get money or you get funding or however you want to do it, you could commission someone to do one of the circles or multiple circles on the corridor. Okay, thank you. It kind yeah, of so th th those who speak to definitely the, the easiest way to kind of um, come back and incorporate when the, the conditions are right, you know, something like paving treatments a little more difficult to usually your, your heavy civil contractor is going to need to be putting in those sorts of things unless it's very, very isolated. Yeah. So yeah, that's why Randall's focusing on those two things because they can be, they can be decoupled from the main you know, roadway process that we're trying to build too. And we can still get the artwork that we want at the end, but just not have it be on the same construction schedule. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. Um, yeah, you're just decoupling the public art piece and then it gives you the opportunity to select and do that process the way that you want to do it. Um, okay. The paving would probably go in as a part of this project, like Blake mentioned. Um, we would theme it and then set up a template and have that placed in key spaces. Another one too would be the, the bus shelters. I think there's an opportunity there if the, if the county would allow you to do something to those or have a public artist apply a screen to the back that's maybe recycled materials or add color or, you know, um, I think there's some, some opportunity there. Okay. And then, um, and then I just really wanted to go back just for a moment to the, the parking, there should definitely be some parking that allows for access. Cause this is, if this is just on the other side of 25, that means that there's a little highway that people have to cross to get to it. Sure. So, um, just making sure that it is accessible and that this doesn't become just kind of a lost place, especially since this is going to be industrial, which means that people aren't living there. They're working there, but are they riding their bike all the way from Trace Pinos to get there? It's, you know, this community is actually quite large. Spread out, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm thinking we should look for um, parking spaces along the frontage road. That's where we're gonna have this, that's where it's gonna be ideal, right? Because it, the, typically those spaces can be used during the day, you know, for instance, for industrial users and, if you want to do something over the weekend and it's street spaces, right? There's some space to park your car and do something. So, and we can see if, uh, as we get closer to the dark park, if there's parking opportunity. Um, it's going to be limited, but I think there may be opportunity, but um, we'll, we'll look for, we look for, for space to create that. Agree. Commissioner Sanchez, do you have a comment? Um, yeah, I, I really also wanted to just um, ask about safety, for instance, you know, there are plenty of places, for instance, like when you go to, yeah. I don't know what that jogging spot is behind um, San Benito High School, but there's just so many places oh, yeah. that, you know, people like come out on you, you know, from, from being in the back of a bush or whatever. Um, what, what exactly are the, yeah, the safety um, planning around that? I know. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I know some places have like the those blue lights. Um, I don't know if there were talks about putting those in. Um, they kind of, if you hit them, they alert police or authorities or something. Um, for such an industrial area, maybe a couple of those out there. I don't know if you guys were setting a time limit, like maybe sundown, the walking trails closed or I, I, I don't know some ideas uh, those are those are elements we have not considered yet but thank you for the notes 
Yeah, security is very difficult because there's, you know, we can design and we've got the lighting for the evening and the idea is that people actually, when it's cooler at night in the summer, that you can still do the walk. So, so I think the lighting will add a, a level of, of some pedestrian security and bicycle security. Mm-hmm. You know, during the day, um, I mean, we can look at the landscaping to not create a rush where somebody can hide in, right? So we, we and, and that it's great, that sense of safety, you know, safety also has a lot to do with enforcement. Um, you know, so obviously relying on on on, on city police to to help uh, make the trail and and the roadway safe as well. Yeah, I was just going to add, Frederick, too. Yeah, it's, you you mentioned landscape. It's low plant material and then trees that are trimmed up so that you know police and other folks can see through that you're not creating places for people to hide. And then you got visibility, and then lighting is always key. I mean, essentially, it's it's like a public sidewalk. It's just expanded with a if you think of it like that, like a multi-use pathway yes in what is essentially an industrial area right now we talked about the future that could change um so it's really a way for people to get from point a to point b within that area is there any uh any more commissioner comment or comment from um kimberly horn folks before we move on to new business or um is there any more ideas that we have for these gentlemen? My only question would be, um, how do we uh, send them maybe ideas after? Um, do we have the contact information or who we email? Or Yeah, you can definitely either email Tina um, and she could pass info over to us at planning or you can email our general planning email is just planning at hollister.ca.gov. Just put in there that you're talking about the San Felipe beautification corridor study, um, and that'll get to either myself or Amber, or you can email us directly, um, just our name, eba.kelly at hollister.ca.gov or amber.cameron at hollister.ca.gov. And we can, um, Tina can, you, you would be able to forward our contact information to the commissioner's first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there um, any opportunity that you'll be in any of our other commissioner meetings up until you guys have everything, or is this the only time you're meeting with us? I think for now, this is the only one. Um, our next, uh, so we, we plan to go to council with um, what, you know, some of the steaming and um a, a section of the roadway in May, um, mm-hmm. you know, early May. So, um, you know, and you're welcome to, to, to join that meeting to give more input. Um, I think in the future when actual design starts to happen, right? So concept designs and more of the futures get into a design element, right? That's when we'll definitely come back to you. Um, but that will be later when, when, when we get into schematic design features. And... Will you send us this presentation? Uh, yes, I can. I can send a copy of all. Uh, it was provided when we s- submitted the agenda, but um, we will. I could certainly send that to um, probably Tina um, or or um, Eva. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I can get you the the six slides we presented tonight. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, what was the timeline? When did you need us to respond? I'm sorry if I missed that. If we could have your comments by um, April 15th, that'll be great. So it's about uh, four weeks out. After that, we got to get ready for council. Okay, thank you. Well, we got good comments tonight. This is precisely the kind of feedback we were looking for from the commission. So, um, and obviously opportunity for a follow-up, but, you know, we definitely got, this is what we were hoping to get tonight. Of course. And I'm, I'm sure as any, you want to get the ball rolling as quickly because this stuff takes time, I'm sure. So. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate uh, all you guys um, for with all this information and the slideshow. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Tina, do we move on to the, um, let's see, City of Hollister 150th anniversary? Yes, we can uh, move forward. Um, thank you for, to our commissioners and, and thank you to Kimberly Horn and planning staff uh, for providing this PowerPoint. Thank you, thank you, commissioners. Thank you so much. Yeah, I enjoyed listening. The engagement was there, so, um, and all the input. Thank you. So we'll move on to our State of Hollister's 150th anniversary. 
we, we did have our council member, our vice mayor, I should say, Vice Mayor Perez come in on, on behalf of the 150th um, committee uh, requesting that we put a call for artists uh, to create a uh, flag that we can hang. So I will put that together. Um, and before I submit it to anyone or to the community, I will forward it to our commission. And uh, if we can just review it, look through it, um, and then hopefully at our next council, our next commissioner's meeting, we can um, have a flyer and um, be able to provide the community with some information because that's gonna that's gonna come around very quickly, you guys. Um, mm -hmm. we're, next month we hit April, so that leaves us with May, June, and July is when we're doing our celebration of with the city. So only three months out, and then um, on. Besides what Vice Mayor talked about, I also was um, kind of seeking our our commissioners' um, volunteer time to help out with um, some of our events that we're going to put on throughout the month of July every weekend. I think um, well, there's one that it will include art and culture concept, and I think Commissioner Sanchez, you might have been in talks with some um folks uh with the San Bruno Art Council uh, so we'll look into more into that and provide more information um for the city of Hollister 150th anniversary um is anything else needed from the commissioners besides the um the call to artists for the flag call to artists and then our commission will approve the artwork okay awesome um can we move on to new business new business for clean california beautification project yes i did put this on our agenda uh yesterday um thinking that we would be a little more involved with this project but it sounds like it's a uh, uh, Caltrans uh, Clean California grant. Um, so some of the art components we don't have final approval on. <laughs> um, so that's that would, threw me off a little bit. I expected us to be able to review it and approve it. Not us, but our commission. I expected you guys. So I, I think she, our chair Chiata is going to be a part of that ad hoc myself and I'll have to review the email and let you guys know who the other person is. But that project right there will not come back to the commission um, for a vote. It'll just be a report. Okay. Um, new business five, Hollister Skate Park. I placed this on, on this one on the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Sanchez requested that we add it to the agenda, so I will let Commissioner Sanchez speak. Okay, um, so I guess I'll just give you some uh, background information. So my, my son in particular skates. Um, and so when we first moved here, it was one of the things that, you know, we were trying to do is find places for him to, you know, spend his time safely. Um, and so the skate park is uh, one of the places that, you know, we ended up at and he's still spends quite a bit of time there. Um, and there was uh, some times that I felt concerned um, because there's, and, but this is actually the skate community, right? Where you have, you know, a child who's eight years old and there's, you know, a man who's 30, you know, who's skating, you know, it's just one of these dynamics with the skate park. Um, and so, um, you know, some concerns around, you know, people drinking at the park, um, you know, these kinds of things where you say you have little kids in the same space. Um, and so clearly beautification always helps, right? Uh, um, and it also attracts more people, more families, uh, and of course, a, a sense of, of community, right? Where everybody's sort of watching uh, over each other and each other's children. Uh, and so um, there are many, many um, 
you know, designs out there that have incredibly beautiful, beautiful uh, murals on uh, skate parks. Um, one of the things that really um, called my attention was the name of the park uh, is, so it's named after uh, David Yetter, which is a young man who unfortunately uh, passed while in, in a skating accident, unfortunately. Um, and so the park had been created before, but they rememorialized it um, with David Yetter's uh, name now. And so I don't believe I'm um, actually, um, uh, what is the reporter from the Benito link uh, came through and he, he actually uh, came and did a story and interviewed the kids. Um, and so there was a story that was put out in terms of, you know, restrooms there that don't, you know, that they're not used anymore. Well, they're like those porta potties out there, um, you know, water fountains, these kids, you know, sweat like crazy and there's nowhere to get a clean water source. Um, and so, uh, you know, things like that, that would make it more inviting for people mm -hmm. to go. And, and given that we talked about also the, you know, the sort of darkness of the city at night, um, you know, I do believe that it's one of these places that could potentially be a really great space during the summer for kids to be out there at night, but the lights are always off. And at times you find people there skating in the dark, mm -hmm. uh, which is really um, curious um, because they clearly want to be there. And especially in the summertime, you know, the day is so long, um, you know, that, you know, they want to stay out there, you know, until nine or 10. Um, so, I clearly being an, uh, you know, from an artistic background, my first, you know, inclination is we, we want some art out there. Um, also, I think that it's important to honor the memory of David Yetter and perhaps do a rememorialization, you know, of this so that this, the current, you know, kids that are in that, that are skating there understand why that's there, why it's memorialized to David Yetter and why it's so important, right? For instance, the wearing of, you know, helmets and things like that, you know, cause a lot of kids still don't, you know, my kid being one of them, not, not totally getting, you know, why we're constantly after them with their helmets. Um, so I think it's an opportunity and a space to do all sorts of cool things, you know, bring in competitions and, and just, you know, liven it up with some really cool things. And of course, starting with, with the art, you know, and then of course the maintenance, the things that are really important, but these are the, it's the vision it's, uh, you know, for what that part could be and mean, especially in a place where, you know, yes, we realize that there are events uh, or rather, um, activities for kids but definitely not where kids can hang out safely so because we know they go to target or they might go to the skate park you know um, but the skate park is right now it, it feels like it's not totally for everyone um for a lot of reasons um but more than anything it's just not as inviting as as i believe as it could be so what i kind of hear it as is like uh you'd like to kind of see it get a makeover, kind of like a re, not a, like totally do it, but like rebrand itself as like a family fun place, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, clean it up maybe a little bit, um, you know, memorialize. I, I'm, I'm wondering maybe we could, is there a way to kind of get the parks commission and art commission to kind of work on this one, Tina, or? how what are the steps to kind of uh, go through with with uh, Commissioner Sanchez suggestions? Um, it, the start would be with the ad hoc committee kind of getting us all together and creating a design, um, looking at a budget cost. I know some of our council members are in support of kind of reviving that park um, with whether it be a mural or other types of amenities over there, but just cleaning it up, just what Commissioner Sanchez uh, kind of gave her report on um, there. So there is some support there, but we first have to come up with a plan and a budget, and then we can bring it to council. Okay. Oh, and it's Robert Elias, and I'm so sorry. I totally slipped my brain. He's such an incredible writer and reporter and um, one of, and he took a lot of amazing pictures of these kids skating. It was 
really, really cool. Um, so the story is floating out there. If you all um, look it up. Mm -hmm. I don't recall, but I wrote, wrote it down. So I will note it and look at the, the mm -hmm. article. Um, so then at, at this point, you know, considering that clearly, like you said, we would need a budget. Um, so yeah, the next step would be then to say we are creating a proposal. Um, yeah. Yes. That, along those lines. Yes. I think, um, commissioner Sanchez, you're part of that ad hoc and then I'll, I'll, uh, the parks and recreation commission meets at the end of the month. So we'll discuss it with them too. I know there is a commissioner that's um, very passionate about that park and she wants to see some changes there also. Great, great. And who is the other ad hoc person? I, I don't recall. Okay. Um, trans, let's see, skate park. Uh, well, I know it on here, put uh, Chair Chiato put Vice Chair Rojas, but Vice Chair Rojas said he would switch. So you would work with Chair Chiato. Oh, cool. Okay. Excellent. Any Thank you. Other, any other comments for uh, the Hollister Skate Park? Um, can we move to, I'm sorry, let me check. Uh, can we move to New Business 6, the ACC District 1 Commissioner? Um, yes, I wanted to put this on the agenda because we started discussing it a couple of months ago and then we just um, stopped. We still haven't received any applications for the uh, a new Art and Culture Commissioner in District 1. Um, prior to our meeting, I did have a conversation with our vice mayor and he said that he was, is willing to open it up to the city of Hollister. So and if you know of someone that might be interested, please have them apply. Um, initially, his he would like, he wanted to stay within his district, but he has uh, reached out to several people he felt that might be interested. And um, at this point, no one it was interested. So we will open it up to citywide. And uh, tomorrow, I will talk with our city clerk Black and and let her know. And then we'll put post something on Facebook. Where is District One exactly? The region. <laughs> <laughs> down over here near near bless you down by city hall um we're going out towards the airport um i think all the way up to eat west line street down in that area uh, paul do you recall any other areas i'm missing district oh he's looking at the map <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's gonna go but somewhere in that that vicinity it's not all of downtown but it's a portion of downtown okay I'm okay. going to pull it up for us. Oh, nice. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. um, while he's pulling that up, we could, are there any commissioner comments? Yes. I wanted to tell you, if you don't know already, that tomorrow is the STEAM Expo at the Vets Hall. Mm -hmm. And there will be art there as well. And March 31st is an arts showcase at the Vets Hall. And this is all put on through the San Benito County Office of Education. What was March 31st? I'm sorry. It's an arts showcase. Art showcase. Mm -hmm. And what time is the STEAM Expo tomorrow? Uh, let me look. It is. <clears throat> it's from four to seven. Four to seven. Thank you. And the same time for the March 31st Arts Showcase. Okay. And this is through San Mateo County um, Office of Ed? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So on the screen is uh, the district, current district map. Um, the, the green area is district one. Covers a large area. Downtown right here. And then the airport goes out this way to the north. And just for reference, the other districts are here. I believe this is two, three, and four. And how, 
Okay, District 1 does that little kind of jump into District 2. So is that the, um, is that Dunn Park? That's to the left of the bottom yeah. area of District Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm, no. 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 Park. no. Is this R.O. Harden right here? Oh, oh okay. Okay, it's so a development to the right. Yeah. Yes. Dunn Park is here's the um a further up here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here's the tennis courts right here. Okay. What is the street boundary then of of that? That little area. Um, <clears throat> or I can look it up on our website, right? Might be Line Street here. I believe this this is this is Fourth Street. This must be South Street because this goes to the Sierra Pond. It's West Side Boulevard, I think. This is the city yard here. So it's like Line Street and then up um south street to what's that that's west street no that's not west street um pal pal yes you're right mm -hmm. pal all the way down to not sure what street this is know. this might be nash no okay. not nash it uh, might be that that's over by our hardened school right oh okay yeah, it's a high school's way over here. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what street that is. That might be West Side. West Side Boulevard. I read. No, no. West Side. Um, I couldn't tell Hayden. Hmm. Hayden or Hawkins or something yeah. like that. Is this the high school here? Oh, so okay. Yeah, this, so this might be Hayden, I think, or Hawkins. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it goes all this is probably McCray, I would think. No, this is McCray. This might be Sally. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Kind of hard to tell on this little map. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, I just had one more comment. Um, have there any been any talks or any interest in like a park or a space that's dedicated to art craft or food truck. I know the city has been kind of dealing or food trucks have been dealing with trying to find places to park or I recently been to Sand City and they have a night where um, it's an industrial, it looks like a parking lot area. Um, they made it look really nice. There's benches out there. It's windy and it's cold uh, on the off uh, season, but um, I can imagine it being a good meeting space and they're able to sell their food. They're able to sell their homemade jewelry, candles, soaps. Um, I mean, has there been any interest or is this the commission to talk about something like that? I don't know if it falls into parks or it falls into art. Um, and I'm sure we'd have to talk with council. And I'm not sure what the ordinances are for food trucks. Um, I know they've been having a hard time. And even if it's just one day out of the month, you know. Um, curious about that. A lot of stuff is done in Bellotto Park. Is that right? Yeah, yes, which is, which is nice. But that is also a drive out. Um, you know. Um, was hoping hoping that the city or us or some sort of commission can get something together for something that's more in town. Um, I'm not sure. What are your thoughts, Tina? Um, several questions or answers to your questions. 
Um, I know that our planning department, our development services department has been working on um, something that may allow some of our mobile trucks to park and, and you know, at events or, or I, I know they're working on an ordinance. I don't know all the details, but um, over on San Benito Street near Nino Real Estate, there's a small parking lot in there and they do have some of those um, maker's market. Um, I don't know if any food trucks go in there. Um, so that's one area that, but it's more, it's private. It's run privately. It's, it's not run through the city and there has been some discussion, but nothing, uh, brought forward to our, our commission, but, um, I can look into that our, not our commission, our council. I will look into that and I can add that to the agenda for next month. And I, we definitely would have, you know, some sort of input in it because many of the night markets that I've been to, um, there's elements of art there. You know, there's um, there is murals, there is, uh, you know, re reclaimed, um, recycled um, pieces, you know. Uh, so I guess when the, the time and when the discussion comes, It'd be it would be nice for us to be considered for such art things. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll look up some stuff and then bring it back at, at the April meeting. Thank you. Um, any other commissioner comments? I'll just say um, my advanced art students are prepping for their awareness campaign event. That's going to be on May 26th. It's a Thursday and it'll be on campus at the high school and it's during our lunchtime. Mm -hmm. But if anybody is able to come out, it would be really neat. They have booths and they put on their little campaign event. Thank you. What, uh, what time uh, is it? Oh. Um, I'll have to look at the exact time because it's a Thursday. It's our short day. It's during lunch. And um, yeah, I have to look at the time exactly for that one. Um, I guess, uh, okay, I'll look out for it too. Um, I'd like to also share too that at uh, Kanta, an, an artist, a local artist uh, theater, um, she actually is holding um, workshops for newcomers so um immigrants to the united states and it's essentially you know I've, I've come here now what next um and so it's actually going through sort of like creating resources for people when they don't either know someone or um you know, and have many questions, but also there's a lot of sort of processing um, and doing, um, you know, theater exercises to process through the move, um, what you're feeling when you're new to a place, a country this specifically, and when you don't speak the language. Um, so it is um, all in Spanish. So if anybody knows of anyone who can um, benefit from, you know, coming together with another group of, of newcomers, um, in a really, really um, compassionate setting. Uh, it's on Saturdays at eight o'clock, or sorry, six to eight o'clock for the next like couple months. And it's free. Six to 8 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Is there something that I could pass on to the school? Because I think they this would be a good, the school would be a good resource, you know, or yeah, no, I'm I could send a, I could send a flyer, uh, the poster to the, sure. the program. Okay, thank also you. The group. Okay, yes. thank you. Any comments? All right. Can we set our next regular meeting date? I uh, see April twelfth, twenty twenty two, six p.m. I'm good with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Approved. And you, Chris, uh, Commissioner Ross? I am okay with it. I may have to log on. You know, I don't know. It's our it's our spring break, 
so I don't know where I will be. <laughs> oh wow, that is true. I'm hoping to take a little break <laughs> from. I actually am not. <laughs> so good to be reminded. Of. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually trying to get out too. <laughs> so. <laughs> so probably the week after, we can host another special meeting. Oh my God! What is a special meeting? Four, I don't know if we'll get our our fifth um, I... during that time. <laughs> I think we, um, I think they call a special meeting when we don't have the regular scheduled meeting, right? Oh, so, we could call a special meeting. Or we could uh, just cancel. So oh, because okay. we missed um, last one because of the the, the summit or uh, the conference we attended. The conference where Tina went. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Is so everyone okay? So that would make it. For information, um, yeah the. Arts and Culture Commissioner is usually the second Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. Um, but if you were going to do what you did last month and uh, cancel the, that regular meeting and do a special one the following Tuesday, which is the 19th, um, Council Chambers is open. So you could do that. Plus, I mean, you could still do Zoom or whatever, but anybody that comes to the public, you want to make sure that there's nothing scheduled here. So it's open if that's it is open yeah, yeah so, uh, so open. do other commissioners uh wish to change it to the april 19th tuesday the third tuesday of the month at six i'm okay with that yeah thanks <laughs> All right, um, and then do we adjourn the meeting at six or at seven forty-seven p.m.? Yes, by roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Ross approved. Commissioner Sanchez approved. Vice Chair Rojas yes approved. Okay. Thank you. Adjournment <laughs> passes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate everyone. Thank you Thank all. Thank everyone, too. Appreciate it. Great meeting. Yeah, it was a good conversation there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad we... Uh, uh, so, oh, I guess I can talk about that next week. <laughs> <laughs> so the bylaws are, are set. Our bylaws are set, and we can start making these decisions and... Yes, the bylaws are going on the city council's agenda Monday, and um, they will approve them then. Um, so I, I've talked to a few council members, and they're in support of it. I don't see um, any concerns at this point. Okay. All I right. have to just point out one thing. If we have to have our information to the um, beautification, the San Felipe, by April 15th, do we want to meet before then? Or are we are we doing this all via email? Um, so I'll set something up for that ad hoc meeting or, or that ad hoc committee. Let me see who's on that committee and I will send an email out um, hopefully within the next two weeks. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. All right. Have a good evening, everybody. Night. Good night. You Thank too. you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks.